Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Borderwise, and welcome to the final episode of the particularly little Let's Build series, making a giant uh, octogun canoe, because it's high time uh, that we finish this off so we can go and build other uh, things which are better, if not necessarily bigger. So you'll immediately notice something a little bit different about this Let's Build. I have reached the new stage of Let's Build Video Evolution, I guess. Uh, this is at two times speed, because I do want to get on uh, to doing other Let's Build videos, and there's a lot of fiddling around and tweaking uh, in this one. He said with confidence, even though he doesn't actually remember uh, what happened here. Uh, immediately you'll notice, geez, this is a different feeling. Past me is going crazy. Uh, you'll immediately notice what happened is just I prefabbed the, the lambs uh, that was built last time and just slapped it down there. So this, uh, this big honking canoe has four uh, separate lamb systems, which means it's got great redundancy. It means if it gets hit in one, it still has a bunch of others. A little bit of reinforcing right there. Lovely, lovely. Um, looking back on it, there probably wasn't much point to that layer of metal. Uh, because um, if shots are getting in there, that's kind of too late. Oh no. No, I, no, I remember. It's because it's right next to an ammo compartment. Never mind. That's important. Past me, smart. Present me, less smart. And... What are you doing? What are you doing now? Okay, so yeah, so it's basically repeating uh, the lambs nodes uh, from last time. Um, yeah, I was about I was about to say it's helpful to place uh, figure out where the lambs nodes go first and then place the lambs compartment afterward. But that's silly. Disregard that advice. That advice is weird. Uh, usually doesn't happen that way. So yeah, what? A yeah, this is kind of why this uh, video is at times too speed, because it's just fiddly stuff. And in this particular case, it's just stuff I covered before. This is actually two separate recording sessions, uh, by the way, that I have uh, mashed together. Uh, because, like, you know, the final the final stages of making something like this, all the, all the big stuff's been done. And it's basically just fiddly stuff, like um, putting more stuff... What, what else happens in here? Oh yeah, there's a fair amount of adding, um, uh, what's it, countermeasures, particularly torpedo countermeasures. And I do remember I was uh, a little bit, um, I don't know, I totally could have um, stuck missiles on this thing. Uh, but I decided against it? I'm not entirely sure why I decided against it. It, um, it worked just fine without them, but um, yeah, like I totally could have done that. Totally could have. The, the next giant canoe um, I make uh, that's in, that's even remotely similar to this. Uh, oh, that's so nice! Just vaporizing an entire swarm of missiles from a hornet's nest is just fantastic, fan dabby dozy. Gotta say. And then and then you vaporize the uh, the hornet's nest, and there you go. Oh, so good. That's. Gotta be one of my favorite parts of building anything in From the Depths is just, um, it's just getting to the point where things are functioning as you want them to function, and then you just, um, do a little test. Just, you take a break from the actual building of stuff, and you do a little test. Oh, yeah, that, that's another thing I did. This is why you can't take too, take too long with making... Uh, a let's build video because you completely forget what you do in the pre-recorded footage so yeah the the laser on the back which is actually a very important part of this whole craft um yeah that's a uh, that's basically the little laser compartment and it's not very big you'll immediately notice it's not a strong laser i actually am very fond of um because i'm not a huge like i like mm, how do you explain this i like using lasers I'm not a tremendous fan of them still. I just like using them because they're, you know, the best anti-air um, weapon you could possibly hope for. Yes, better than particle cannons. Um, for the simple reason that you can have the back line of the thing all below decks. And um, you can just... Um, like, yeah, you can have a tiny little turret popping up. And, yeah, it's like the very, very good separated out kind of thing. So... I'm not sure when they, also yeah like um, you can tell lasers aren't my main deal because uh, I do weird things with them this kind of like uh, uh, two meter tall uh, setup 
uh, right here. I use this fairly often because I always like pushing um, the use of volume uh, right to the edge, so to speak. Uh, your laser compartment, be it for an offensive laser or or a lambs, like what I've just done, just have at very least uh, three by three. And this is me just trying to figure out uh, what kind of uh, what kind of uh, pre-baked uh, two-axis laser turret uh, I need for this, and it's uh, fascinating. It's um yeah, two-axis laser. What can you say about two-axis laser? It's a uh, well. In this particular case, like, what are you doing, mate? <laughs> okay, that's, I really, like, I didn't need to do that, but uh, I guess I just wanted it naturally pointing the other way. Also, this is me being kind of lazy and not sticking 100% to the theme of this, which, uh, for anyone who uh, doesn't remember, the whole point was to uh, be uh, a giant wooden canoe and minimal amounts of other materials. That's a complete lie, actually, because, um... Uh, because, like, there's a, like, you know, it's made out of reinforced wood instead. So, okay, yeah, secondary AI. Wow, wow, it's a very different feeling, um, commentating over this. Um, commentating over this, uh, when, uh, the base footage is timed to speed. It actually looks like Passport Wise is, a, is an efficient and quick builder <laughs> when you, when you look at stuff like this. Uh, he isn't. Uh, don't let him tell you otherwise. Uh, Pass Borderwise is uh, often desperately slow because he has to stop and let, to let his brain uh, catch up to what he's doing. Or the other way around. And just AA laser, name the thing, and... Do you remember that? See, like, that didn't need to take... Imagine that, but um, uh, taking twice as long, and you can see why I decided to speed up this particular segment of the Let's Build. If you want, if you guys want me to do that with future Let's Build videos, uh, do let me know. Um, depending on, you no, know, like it's like for this particular one, it does kind of make sense to do that because it's a whole bunch of fiddly stuff, and um, it's like it also makes sense just to mash these two recording sessions into one because this one uh, was about an hour, and the second one was just half an hour, and it just you know, it didn't it didn't feel right to do two. Uh, videos one an hour and one half an hour so I kind of squished them into one and if you absolutely hate that and never want me to do it again also let me know in fact just generally let me know what you want even if it has nothing to do with the video let me know what kind of I don't know let me know what kind of pet you want <laughs> like if in, in case that's uh that's something you want to happen and this is the part where I once again find out for myself that um uh, maybe a continuous laser is not the best idea. I actually don't remember. I might be getting my own. I have a shockingly bad memory for my own craft and what they do. Uh, because, um, in this particular case, I don't remember what I end up going with. I did, like, okay, I did finish building this thing quite some time ago. In fact, the campaign that this thing is, uh, built for, uh, has been over, uh, for, like, you know, I finished that the other day. Go what the finale of that, by the way, is hilarious because I'm the closest to drunk I've ever been. Uh, because um, I'm just I was just so tired, I was just so sleep deprived, slept very badly the night before. Friday night, woo! But in any case, um, yeah, like uh, lasers, lasers, lasers. Anyway, like the this um, this build was a roaring success. I do have to say, like it's um, not the most meta craft in the world. As you could probably guess. In some ways it's very meta, and in other ways it's really not. Uh, being made mostly of reinforced wood is kind of half good move, and like, you know, big brain meta move, and half really, really not. Uh, because it means it's, um, for its size, it is actually kind of cheap. If this thing was made out of metal, and um, if you are using, uh, if you're in the current beta test, and this statement's not going to age well, if you're in the current beta test, um, uh, I do believe this thing is on the workshop. If it isn't, man, I've got just a terrible memory in general. But in any case, uh, this thing, uh, if you swap all the reinforced wood out for metal, it be gets a lot more expensive. And especially if you uh, swap out all that wood uh, slopes on the side for metal as well. Way more expensive. Way, way, like, um... Way, uh... 
not less efficient, it just costs way more. And uh, people have told me in the... Um, okay, firstly, disclaimer is that it's not on a super hard difficulty, uh, that uh, Wood Canoe Neater campaign playthrough I just finished. Uh, but also, uh, because uh, these things are... Uh, that, well, but this one in particular is very big for its volume, it basically means I'm consistently putting bigger guns in play uh, than the AI is. So, yeah, interesting interesting playstyle that's kind of... It's not really feasible if you, you know, and it's not feasible equally against every fa And, okay, here... Okay, I'm gonna interrupt myself. Did you see how much better that went? Uh, so much better. Uh, because, um, as it turns out, uh, silly, silly me, um, if you have a... I think this is just a one... Yeah, it's just a 1Q laser. Uh, that tends to work a wee bit better um, than um, just, you know, than a continuous laser because, you know, each shot of the laser actually takes blocks off and doesn't scatter. Herp derp. Like, uh, all the laser crew, which is my new name for the people who like and use lasers a lot, are shake probably shaking their heads right now um, and saying, Borderwise, we told you, we told you, we told you, and, um... What the heck is going on there? I'm trying to remember what's happening here. Oh, flare spelled badly. There we go. No, never mind. Got uh, corrected. So, this is the next stage, is using big flares. And I like using big flares because... I don't know, I just, you know, big flares you get more consistent results. I am fully aware that sometimes you've got to do what I'm doing right now, which is use very long um, medium missiles. So yeah, that's, um, I'm not entirely sure why I did that instead of not testing it. Probably because, yeah, it's hard to tell what past me was thinking at this point, but, uh, he was thinking something. I guarantee you it wasn't entirely head empty. Um, is he doing flares? He should be doing flares. Why are you not doing flares? Are you doing flares, though? Interesting, wow. Do not, oh no, definitely doing flares. Yep, here's the, uh, here's the bit. And this was, yeah, this was before the current beta test where there's actually a shortcut to swap out missile components. I said missile, I said missile, I meant missile. Missile versus missile. I believe it is the Americans who generally say missile, and other people say missile. It's okay, I know what you mean. And yeah, a little bit more radar signal. Yeah, beautiful. So yeah, these are uh, pretty big, uh, chunky things. And yeah, okay, right there, checking the radar uh, signature of the thing. And one of the great things about having a craft like this, a broadside in particular, that's so low slung, it's got a very low, um, it's got a low profile. I love building things like that. Um, tanks, of course, but also ships, uh, is precisely because from the side they have a low radar signature, which means that countermeasures work a little bit better. It's not perfect, and um, there are plenty of reasons why you should not make a, a ship um, with such a low signature. And one of them, I just remembered off the top of my head, is that um, waves are a thing uh, in From the Depths, especially like... It's mainly a worry if you're going to play the campaign. If you do tournaments and stuff like that, and that's your main uh, motivation for playing, you don't need to worry about that so much, but it's just, um, if you have superstructure, if you have basically a sensors poking up reasonably high, um, you get, um, they can poke above big waves, which means that your cameras aren't trying to look through water all the time, because that is a thing. That is a thing I have run into, in fact, I was running into it, um, run into it multiple times on a campaign, uh, both in the original Nita playthrough, well, my first full playthrough of the Nita campaign, and also the more recent one. It feels weird to have beaten it twice. I don't get real bragging rights for doing that, because, um, uh, because the first one was on regular difficulty, and the second time was kind of on easy difficulty, so to speak. And, oh, fantastic. I love it. I love flares. I love it when the flares work. I love it when they do things that work. And, yeah, so lovely. 
But yeah, so in case anyone's wondering, I definitely will be playing uh, Nita again. Uh, on harder difficulties, probably. I'm uh, not sure what the theme of that playthrough would be. It needs, a, it needs to have a theme that allows my limited competence, that's, you know, at From the Depths, um, to do something fun and cool. Like, I've been planning um, how to do a very hard campaign playthrough. So that's uh, not just all the sliders cranked up to max, but also the starting location. Um, uh, being right in the middle of the map with everybody hating you and wanting to kill you. Um, so, yeah. Oh, yeah, then this is where we... Um, this is where we get to put some missile interceptors around, and that's fun. But yeah, so I've already started planning uh, for that, what kind of things I need. And I think immediately, like, because I have gotten better at the game. I can uh, say that for sure, since I last time I played that, it was hilarious. There's, um... Ah, uh, terribly sorry, I don't remember the name of the person, but uh, the person who, um... Worked on the Wolin, the Steel Striders uh, uh, submarine. Um, it's a very good submarine. And I do recommend you have a look at that. It's a, it's a, it's a good design. I feel uh, submarine-wise, uh, pretty formidable. And um, they, <laughs> their day was absolutely made when I kind of uh, had a meltdown at the fact that that thing has uh, an underwater sea whiz gun, just a simple weapon version. And it just makes me so pleased that my pain <laughs> uh, made the creator of that craft uh, happy that day. Just briefly. But yeah, I will freely admit that I was not properly prepared uh, for playing uh, the campaign on the hardest difficulty. And I knew I wasn't, and I got salty anyway. Which is shame on me, really. Losing is fun, as the Dwarf Fortress people say. Or it can be fun. Depends on how badly you lose. Losing in From the Depths is fun because um, losing in From the Depths is another way of saying learning experience. So, yeah, what, uh, what else can I say? Oh, yeah, well, how am I going to plan for the hardest difficulty setting? Well, firstly, I need to build a laser satellite because that already, like, half the factions have no defense against that kind of thing. And, um,. Yeah, I need to build a laser satellite, I need to build a cheesy submarine with lots of super cavitation APS. Like, you got, how did I survive uh, in the days before I discovered how wonderfully uh, effective and just generally useful super cavitation APS is? How did I live? I The battlecruiser I built for my latest campaign playthrough uh, has actually dedicated underwater seawars specifically for torpedoes. Because I didn't want to use any kind of sonar decoys, even though I used that on a PT boat uh, in the very same uh, campaign a roster, so to speak. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's amazingly effective. You just put some not very big 60mm uh, kinetic um, APS just below the hull, just hull mounted. And the thing can actually deal with entire swarms of torpedoes, and in fact, it can... Uh, slow down and cripple even, like, volleys of very big torpedoes, which is really handy and really cool. So, this is, once again, this, it's a good feeling, actually, um, to play from the depths, and then you just kind of finally get around to trying a thing that may or may not, um, uh, let me rephrase that sentence. It's a fun feeling to get around to something that, um, people may or may not have, in, have informed you of, and then you realize, like, wow, where, where, like, why didn't I try this earlier? It's so good. I have done that multiple times. So, yeah, this game's beautiful like that. So, Underwater Seawiz is something I'm absolutely in love with. And, um, uh, especially the big ships I end up making, I am totally going to use that a whole bunch. And Seawiz in general, because, um... Again, this statement's not going to age well, but the current beta test, so if you're watching this far in the future, you future space person, um, uh, know that um, at this time in the beta test, the SeaWiz controller, or the anti-missile uh, cannon controller, uh, to use its older name, uh, has gotten a bit of an overhaul, and if you're watching this, like, the day it uploads or somewhere similar, like, go have a play with that if you haven't already, because it is fantastic. And, um, 
Yeah, it's just so much better, and I can actually, I am actually allowed to like sewers now because the UI isn't like brain meltingly awful, full of things that I don't really understand. So yeah, lovely, lovely. And speaking of stuff, uh, missile interceptors, and didn't work incredibly well because why is this not working incredibly well? It's because it's not working incredibly well, so... Missile interceptors are... Even with the kind of, um... When on earth was it? The kind of overhaul they had? They're kind of hit and miss, and that's another reason why the new Seawiz controller is fantastic, is because, um... Uh, they make interceptors actually a lot more useful. I've yet to playtest that a lot, but, um... Yeah, they can, you know, you can set the Seawiz controller... Uh, to prioritize um, certain targets, like you do, and if it's controlling uh, missile interceptors, as in the controller that is firing missile interceptors, uh, they can inherit uh, the priority of it. So you can actually have proper prioritization uh, with missile interceptors, which you can't really do um, otherwise. So that's super handy dandy, and I love it. And, you know, like, we all gotta start making iron domes. Um, and, like, actual effective Patriot missile systems, stuff like that. It was a fun fact, historical, historical fun fact time, which I'm guessing, like, a lot of the uh, military hardware slash history uh, nerds in the audience uh, probably would already know this, but just how shockingly bad, um, I think, when was it? It was, like, the Gulf War, and um, maybe the first, maybe the second um, Iraqi wars, uh, the American Patriot missile system was just almost just a propaganda tool because it was just shockingly bad at um, oh dear that ooh, pfft, yeah my canoe just did a poop that's no good but uh, yeah so the Patriot missile system was apparently really bad at shooting down uh, enemy missiles in particular uh, Scud missiles it's just it just didn't work well. It was um, one of the, I think it was one of the earlier forms of uh, missile uh, interceptor that the U.S. military had. Don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. I'm sure there are going to be people in the comments uh, pointing out um, how I'm wrong about that, and that's fantastic because it means like um, it means like you know I'll know that I'll be wrong, and that's great. And see right there, uh, I might have to go back to look at that. Also, did I spawn in the Wolin? I think I am spawning in the Wolin. I forgot to look. But anyway, um, that moment right there when you just have a swarm of torpedoes and the uh, torpedo interceptors, um, ignoring the ones which are close and heading for the ones further away, uh, that is one of the main problem with using, well, missile interceptors in general, but also uh, shark poppers, as I like to call uh, anti-torpedo to torpedoes. Um, even though I guess ray poppers would be a little bit, uh... Oh, it's the black current. My bad. My bad. This is the point in the video where you know that I'm not even paying attention to my own video right now. And let's see, are we going to see the torpedo interceptors being dum-dum again? Uh, no, but we are going to see them, uh, not be enough to take on a black current. Which, by the way, is a, a kind of kind of high bar to set for oh there's the wolin there's the wolin hello hello i think this thing's been updated um so yeah i think i dropped my standards at some point because i realized that in the campaign i was playing it was very unlikely that i would um that i would end up um like you know fighting against a black current so yeah Right, also, this is the point where I decided that this missile decoy wasn't working because problem with uh, this kind of, I guess, hull design, craft design, is that um, because so much of it's underwater, it's sonar, um, what do you call it? It's like, it's sonar signature is massive, so uh, you're better off shooting incoming torpedoes rather than trying to distract them, and so that's exactly what this is. Um, I believe I goof uh, this a little bit because I actually, you know, don't put, like, I don't know, like, I, I have more missile connectors than I need. 
But anyway, um, this is uh, this is just a butt ton of um, uh, torpedo interceptors, little shark poppers, and it's mostly fins, by the way, because they don't need to be this long. We have APNs, guidance, and ballast tanks, missile interceptor on the front, and um, the rest is fins, just because, well, what else are you going to put there? And um, yeah, so what is it? I think it's the I think there's a bunch of steel striders. Um, or at the very least, a few Steel Striders craft that use this kind of small interceptor um, uh, setup for torpedoes. I've certainly seen a non-faction craft do that before, and uh, it can work pretty well, because it means you can have uh, hundreds of the little bastards uh, just uh, fling out like that, and it's interesting, they just do volleys like that. Very clever, very like. And yeah, when you combine... It's interesting in this way when you combine... Oh yeah, so that is not perfect, uh, but it's a lot better than it was. It's a lot better than it was before. When you kind of combine um, different sizes of missile interceptor, I think, and this is literally going off just what I saw on screen, which you have seen too, and unless you're using this as background noise, in which case, um, that is cool and I appreciate it. I pride myself a little bit. Mostly because people keep telling me that I'm wonderful background noise, so yeah, I'm owning it. I am proud to be background noise. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so what was I saying? I distracted myself again. But anyway, uh, missile interceptor. So yeah, mixing uh, the size of them is kind of cool because it means that um, you get better coverage through time. There's probably a better way of saying that state statement. Um, so it's just uh, different reload speeds, meaning you always have some interceptors in the air. And also, uh, with the change, the missiles, that as they get damaged, they get slower. Their turning uh, ability gets worse, and they do less damage. It means that um, just damaging an incoming missile um, is helpful. You don't need to destroy it, which and that's what the small interceptors are great for. Is that they can uh, just chip away at an incoming missile's health, so it doesn't... Um, can mean the difference between murdering you outright and only slightly murdering you. And it's a lot better uh, than the other thing. Alright, so you'll notice that I am... Well, you noticed while I was barking on, probably, that... Um, uh, that I'm swapping these out for small missiles, because mediums are not doing the trick. You do need a pretty decent volley of um, missile interceptors if you're going to use them. So, yeah, and why am I spawning the black current uh, here again? Why am I doing that? This is not going tremendously well. I'm not thrilled with the, um... See, this is one of the things I hate about missile interceptors, is that they do exactly that. There were two giant missiles coming in uh, for a murdery good time. Uh, they didn't go for the closer one, uh, they went for the one behind it. There's no actual reason they should do that, uh, but they did it, and so new Seawiz controller is going to be so, so helpful for dealing with that, because it'll stop your missile interceptors being, you know, completely and utterly scatterbrained. Even though I just com just removed that completely, actually, I think I, yeah, I think I do actually end up, um, yeah, what do I end up doing? Yeah, I just completely rebuild that. So, do that. Uh, yeah, 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 okay. Oh, yes, this, this is what I do. Do the old fashioned thing. Yep, that's probably the better way to do missile interceptors is just have a lump of them. Huge lump. What are you doing past border wise? This is times two speed, and you can see me kind of going, uh. Not enough oxygen getting to brain. Uh... Oh yeah, and just lo loads more, loads more of this. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Come on, see it past borderwise. You know you want to see it. I'm just doing a little bit more. Do a little bit more. You might think it's risky to stick the interceptors directly underneath the turret. I say nay. And, uh, yep, here's where I noticed that uh, there's been a bit of a whoopsie in the uh, the whole um, 
I guess, defensive setup here, so... Just fix that quickly. They're just like, no one saw that, apart from everybody. Apart from everybody, no one saw that. So that's nice. So... Moving right along... And this is the point where I realize that uh, that ACB is actually controlling the main gun, and that's no good. Uh, because there's the turret right above it, and that's why you gotta do kind of things. I forget who it was. It was oh, actually it was Omus Futile. Um, there, there is the regular shout out to Omus Futile. Go watch all his stuff. He is absolutely one of my favorite um, uh, content uh, from the depths content creators, and also uh, he's one of my favorite Canadians. So yeah, uh, go watch his stuff. Um, his tutorial on ACBs is where I learned how to do that. And I've actually never done an ACB tutorial, which is weird. I've done, I've done it in a kind of roundabout way. I've got tutorials on like how to use ACBs in very specific ways. And oh, there, uh, there's the transition. Second recording session. Second recording session. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I forget what on earth happened in this one. It's um, what do I end up doing in this one? What are you doing? What are you doing, lad? Oh, torpedoes! That's what it is. I went slightly betty on the amount of torpedoes for this thing. In fact, I put so many torpedoes um, on this thing. Actually, that's kind of why I didn't end up putting like a giant missile volley on this, which is what I usually do. I do have a habit of just... I spend so much time on a craft, building the hull and building the main guns and stuff like that. And then there's just a billion missiles on the thing and it's a missile cruiser in disguise. Bathrix would be proud, I hope. But in any case, so, um, yeah, what happened here is just the missile, uh, the missiles. The torpedoes are big and expensive and use a lot of ammo, and I didn't really have enough spare ammo left over for, um, for putting in a similar size, uh, large missile volley. And if you think, uh, to yourself, borderwise, you have so much room in your big canoe, what are you gonna do with the big canoe? Um... With the moon shining all around. Well, then you're absolutely right. I actually have a lot of room in this canoe that I could have used. I did not use it. Because at this point, I was feeling lazy. And, um, even though being lazy has its place, like, um... I was reading on the internet the other day. It's like, um... What, what was it? It was something like, um... Oh yeah, it was a, Bill, a quote from Bill Gates saying, like, whenever I have a problem uh, to solve, I give it to a lazy person to solve, because they'll figure out how to do it with the least work. And there's some truth in that. Um, you want to lay... Like, difference between laziness and sloth, I guess. Um, but yeah, so... No real reason for me to s flip these torpedo um, silos upside down, but I did. And yeah, so this is the point where I'm like, eh, I don't feel like making a whole other ammo compartment even though I can totally do that. And somebody forgot to uh, do that. That was weird. Uh, there's something weird about uh, the um, large missile gantry. There's, there's something peculiar about it. There's something strange. And what else is strange is that, um, actually, no, never mind, we're not doing the frag penetrator thing, even though I love that with torpedoes. And you know what's a really good idea, passporter wise, is staggered fire. Yes. Mm -hmm. You staggered fire, you must. <laughs> I choked on coffee earlier, I can't do a good Yoda impression, and I apologize. Uh. And I think uh, those torpedoes fired without uh, without um, friend or foe detection. Um, I think they came back and hit us, but that's okay. That is what God Mode is for. I want. Never mind. Well, now I've got to say. Now that I've said, never mind. I wonder in the hypothetical future uh, if people stop believing in gods entirely, which isn't very likely. I don't think. Um, somebody forgot mirror mode. Um, whether God Mode will still be the phrase, and people just have no idea uh, where that comes from. It's an interesting thought, isn't it? It's like, there's all kinds of, I guess, artifact uh, terminology. And, um, yeah, it's like... It's like, you know, the save icon for pretty much every computer program in existence is a floppy disk. 
and you know there's entire i think there's like all right don't quote me on this there's like two generations of people who have never used a floppy disk and have no idea what it is so yeah it's also like on the phone the icon for call and hang up is of a landline phone and again there's an entire generation of people who have never used a landline phone because why would you like there's very little point in this day and age to have a landline phone. Like, you have a mobile phone, it can do everything that a landline does. And, alright, so we're we're combat testing this, and that, I believe, is the Wolin. Because the Wolin is a fantastic submarine to test against. There's that underwater sea whiz that I mentioned. It's actually got two. It's got an APS one and, um... What, what the hell is it? It's got a little simple weapon Gatling gun version. That... I respect tremendously, I really love faction designs that teach you something just through their very existence. Love that, love that a lot. Also, like, the Wolin, because of that, like, if you're not filling up to the Black Current, uh, the Wolin is a great submarine to test, uh, to test uh, your uh, torpedo barrage against because, well, it is fairly torpedo-proof as submarines go. Uh, to be fair, this giant canoe is quite a bit bigger and more expensive than the Wolin, so yeah, let's uh, it's not uh, it's uh, what do you mean? Wow, my brain just stopped with that thought. It didn't it, like it stopped thinking. It stopped doing the thinky think. It stopped. It started doing something else. I don't know what it was. I don't remember because it wasn't working. All right, so here's the ill-fated. Um, Maybe not the ill-fated, it's just, um, the missile volley. I think I end up just not bothering with missiles at all on the- Oh, hello. Um, somebody forgot that there were missile interceptors right there. Oh, you wally. That's why you build, uh, missile, uh, racks, uh, if they're in the deck, you build them from the deck down. So you don't do that. Oh, dear. Oh, dearie, dearie me. Sam Madeline the whoopsies. I think these are actually meant to just kind of be anti-air uh, missiles. I don't tend to rely on missiles for anti-air much these days. I remember back in uh, my more newbie days, like, which was just yesterday, <laughs> um, but seriously, like, I used to rely on missiles all the time for AA, um, which I don't recommend, um, simply because, um, well, it depends on the missile. Missiles are weirdly enough and from the depths, they're not optimized uh, for anti-air uh, usage because the way aircraft work and the way missiles work in from the depths is not the same as it works in real life. In real life, the reason why a missile uh, is great for shooting down aircraft is because modern aircraft are too fast and often fly too high for, um, for guns to hit. So, you know, you need your surface-to-air missile sights, you need um, your surface-to-air missile, um, you know, carriers on the ground and stuff like that. And, um, what is happening here? Oh, that's what's happening. Somebody forgot uh, to set up the weapon groups. Mm. Always do that, always try and do that um, as you're building your stuff, because it's just a minor pain in the... It's a minor pain in the tush uh, to do that once you've set everything up already. Um, yeah, that's just testing that. That's all good. And setting that. Just a little tweaks here and there. You can tell this is builds reaching its end. What was I talking about? Uh, I completely forgot. I completely... Oh yeah, so anti-aircraft missiles. It's also because... Fun fact, I have a friend uh, who was in the Singaporean Air Force uh, when he was younger. Part of mandatory mis uh, mandatory missile service. Mandatory uh, military service. And his job was to uh, basically, you know, work on uh, surface-to-air missile sites. And he told, uh, told, ah, we're getting to painting. That's how you know the build's almost done. Yay! But in any case, uh, what was I saying? Um, so yeah, like, uh, Basically, he told me what those things are like. Uh, if you don't know about surface to air missiles... Oh, yes, the black paint. Black paint. If you don't know about surface to air missiles, uh, they're actually kind of big. And uh, they have an explosive radius of 60 meters. So And proximity fuses. So, 
Um, they don't have to hit the aircraft directly in order to destroy it. And of course, remember that aircraft have to be light uh, by design. Uh, so the, you know, it's just, you know, it's the shrapnel and overpressure that just uh, tears the thing to pieces and that'll do. Um, and that's how, why uh, you can't in real life, uh, you can't really do the Star Wars slash movie thing. Star Wars is movies, I know, yes. Um, you can't really do that thing where you do a barrel roll at the last second and dodge the missile because the missile doesn't need to hit you directly. It just needs to get in your general area and then it explodes and um, shrapnel will tear right through the cockpit and the engines and you are going to fall out of the sky, laddie. Uh, that's not how it works in From the Depths. Uh, missiles uh, don't even have proximity fuses anymore. That was removed uh, quite some time ago. And even if they did, the radius on explosive missiles uh, isn't that big. And also missiles actually, weirdly enough, kind of have trouble with very fast evasive targets. Like, uh, because they try and lead it. And missiles in From the Depths are basically just considerably less clever uh, than the ones in real life. Which is ironic if you think about it, because it'd be a lot... Theoretically a lot easier in a video game to make the missiles smart uh, than in real life. Uh, because, you know, it's a lot harder in real life, supposedly. Not saying that the devs uh, should feel bad, but it's just kind of interesting to think about. So, yeah, I think, yeah, this is this thing is painted. I do like this paint job. Uh, you might wonder, for those of you wondering why uh, I like this paint job, it's because it's nice and simple. And, oh, yeah, I remember this. This was, this was just very last second. It's like, hang on, this thing might get shot with lasers. You might want to do something about that. Uh, because I did anticipate um, my, uh, that I might have to use this thing against the Scarlet Dawn. And uh, yeah, they do lasers, they do do lasers. I think at this point in my campaign playthrough I was done with both the Lightning Hoods and Twin Guard. I think. Not quite sure. Actually, no, I wasn't. I remember using this thing against the Twin Guard. See, like, here's the thing about making content on the internet. Well, speaking for myself. Um, particularly. Some people remember what they do very well. Me? As soon as something's done, it's out of my head and I forget about it completely. Which is both a curse and a blessing. It means that all the embarrassing, stupid stuff I've done, because, yeah, there is embarrassing, stupid stuff. Or at the very least, embarrassing, stupid stuff that uh, I think is embarrassing and stupid. There always is a kind of dissonance, so to speak, between uh, what the creator thinks is embarrassing and stupid and what, uh the audience thinks is embarrassing and stupid. There is overlap, but it's not uh, its not directly correlated as you might think. But anyway, I tend to forget about content uh, the split seconds out of my head, which is why I sometimes have trouble remembering what videos I've done already and what I haven't. To be fair, I think a lot of the people who watch my stuff also have trouble remembering what I've done and what I haven't, because uh, just in looking at my own videos on my own channel, uh, YouTube seems to have a bit of a weird problem finding specific videos uh, that I've made. Like, I think that's for everybody, really. Um, so why did I say my channel in particular? Get over yourself, what it was. But, uh, yeah. Uh, it's, uh... Like, it's weird. Like, people ask me to do tutorials that I did ages ago and are still relevant. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I've done that. So it's not really a problem, it's just like, huh, didn't, didn't you find that? Is the, is the algorithm skiving off again? Is the algorithm doing a whoopsie? And the answer is yes, the algorithm is always doing a whoopsie. It's trying its best, bless it, but uh, it's done, it keeps doing the whoopsie. And a little bit of orange trim. This is kind of um, harkening back to a much older way of... Uh, me painting stuff was usually kind of that black, white, and orange. And um, I don't really do that much anymore. But that's also because, um, okay, like, this isn't the best example, but I tend not to make things out of wood so much anymore. Because these days, camo. I just put Arctic camo on everything, and that's, uh, that's all she wrote, baby. So, yeah. Also, I like, I like doing paint like this uh, with uh, staggered slopes, because it's just kind of... I don't know why, it reminds me of something. It's evocative of something, but I don't know what it is. So yeah, that's uh... 
Yeah, just messing with messing with the orange. Got to make sure it's exactly the right flavor of orange juice. Also, fun fact: uh, the current the color orange is named after the fruit, not the other way around. Bet you didn't know that, unless you knew it. In which case, good on ya. If you knew it, I bet you knew it before I did. So yeah, this is like this is the octagon party canoe. Party meaning the party mix that it fires. And what do what do you want to fire? Eh? All right, so this is the part where I just want to watch it maul something. So I'm trying to pick exactly the right thing for it to maul. Bull shark. Bull sharks are fun to shoot at. I remember the bull shark. It used to be way more scary. Also, see that lamb's just uh, zapping a lot of those shells. It's fantastic. And we're losing a fair amount of blocks. Nice combat test against. Also, although like the bull shark does a lot, a lot of high explosive shells, uh, which do kind of do a number on um, the what do you call it? I can't believe I forgot what reinforced wood was. But yeah, reinforced wood does a number on that. But thankfully, if you shoot the bull shark hard enough, it stops shooting at you. It's funny how that works, isn't it? Yeah. Also, immediate degraded mode, because there's just so many uh, shells uh, in the air. Man, I love that gun. I put love into that gun. I put love into that gun, and that gun loves to destroy things. Actually, thank goodness it's at times two speed right now, because my goodness, the game was lagging a lot. So yeah, I think that's, uh, I think that's uh, about it. Uh, about it for this canoe. Like, it's kind of... It's kind of ironic that uh, the Let's Build series of it uh, was finished after the campaign series it was made for. So yeah, whoops. Uh, duly noted. Uh, shouldn't... Um, I think I think with big builds like this I should kind of... Uh, yep, there's a screenshot. Uh, I think with big builds like this I should kind of uh, continue to... Uh, continue to, like like play it back at uh, at a faster speed simply because there's only so much uh, me or anyone else can watch me sitting uh, scratching my head going uh, how do I play this game again so on that very encouraging note for myself and everyone else kind of thank you all so much for watching uh, please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like it really helps, and there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters, and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Let's build. Let me know what you want to see next. I'm always open to suggestions. Farewell.